Good morning, everyone, and Shavua Tov. This Shabbat will be the last Shabbat of the year 5783. The last Shabbat of the entire year. Because next Shabbat, we will already begin Rosh Hashanah, the new year. This is the time of year where our kids began school this past week. And to watch the excitement and the enthusiasm of the children as they prepare for a new year with new binders and new loose leaves and new pencils and they're sharpening them and getting new bags and new erasers and a new backpack and they're talking about who their new teachers are going to be and the new subjects they're going to learn and you watch their excitement and their enthusiasm for a brand new year of school and you ask yourself how can we have that sense of excitement as we approach a new year how can we like these children prepare for a year of growth of change they're discussing the new friends in their class, the new teachers, the new subjects. We too have to say, who are the new friendships, the new relationships we're going to form in the coming year? What are the new tools and skills we're going to acquire to be successful in the coming year? What are the new subjects we're going to learn? And this week's Torah portion sets the stage for all of that. The opening verse says, Atem Nitzavim Hayom, God says, you're all standing here as a Jewish people to enter into a covenant with Almighty God. And the rabbis tell us that this is God's blessing for the new year for all of us as we conclude this past year. It's a new year, it's a new covenant, it's a new relationship. It's a new set of blessings that will descend for you, for your family and for your loved ones. As we approach the new year, let us approach it with courage, with confidence, with faith and trust in God, with hope and aspirations, with dreams, with goals, with ideals, with visions, and not allow it to just be the same old, same old. They tell a story about a young man who found his way back to Judaism. And he went to learn in a yeshiva in Jerusalem and started to rediscover his Jewish roots. And it was Erev Rosh Hashanah, the morning before Rosh Hashanah. And he was taught that it's a custom to go to the mikvah for men to immerse themselves in a body of water, to cleanse themselves and prepare themselves for the new year, like a convert who goes to the mikvah to prepare for a new beginning. So he went to the mikvah in Jerusalem, and the mikvah was filled with very religious looking Jews, elderly men with white beards, some even with peos, side curls, very, very religious community in Jerusalem. And here he was, he still had a ponytail from his days in California, he had tattoos on his body, some of them weren't the most appropriate for a Jerusalem bathhouse mikvah, and as he got undressed he was quite embarrassed. So he covered himself from head to toe with towels. And as he made himself to the body, made his way to the body of water to immerse himself, one of his towels from his shoulders fell down to the ground. And suddenly he turned red because everyone in the mikvah, in this religious community, saw his tattoos all over his chest. And some of them were not very uh, appropriate. They were lewd pictures on his biceps. And he was so embarrassed. Suddenly, an elderly, religious-looking man with a white beard walked over to him and said, Don't be embarrassed that you have tattoos. I also have a tattoo. And he rolled up his sleeve of his shirt, and he showed him his number from the concentration camp. And he looked at this Jew, and he said to him, Young man, I've been through my hell. You've been through yours. But this is a new year. Let us begin it anew. Let's leave the past behind and start afresh. Wherever we were, whatever we did in the past year, whatever our disappointments and failures were, it's in this week's Torah portion, the last one of the whole year, that God says, V'shafta ad Hashem lokecha, you shall return to Almighty God. God says it's never too late to return. To return to God by returning to yourself, to your true self, to your true potential, to the version of who you are. Remember once seeing in a court case in Miami, there was a convict who was sentenced for burglary. And after he was sentenced to jail, the judge, a woman behind <laughs> in a black robe, looks at him and says, Mr. Abbott, did you go to this and this high school in Miami Beach? And he looked at her and before he could even answer yes, he burst out crying and he said, oh my God, oh my God. Indeed, this judge was a fellow classmate of his. The judge went on to say to him, I always wondered what happened to you. I'd lost contact with you. And 
so sorry to see you in this set of circumstances. I hope you could get your life together. And the follow-up of that story was that when this man was released from prison a number of years later, this judge, this woman, was waiting at the entrance of the court of the jailhouse of the prison and she was the first one to embrace him when he left prison to wish him success in the new path and the new journey of his life this criminal burst out crying because when he saw his classmate he realized that he had the potential to make something great of himself but she told him no you may have failed but it's never too late you can do it. I believe in you. You were one of the best kids in the class, he said to her. You were one of the kindest, most wonderful kids. We all have so much goodness and potential inside of us. Let us use this last two weeks to think about how will we make sure that, like our children, it will be a new, exciting, and inspiring year. Shana Tova.